Good day, everyone. I am glad to be here. My name is Ajwa Jones, and I'm here representing with the Black Doula Consortium. As a part of the Black Doula Consortium, we are made up of myself, Ajwa Jones, as the uh, Black Maternal Infant Health Advocate. Uh, we have here today going to be speaking with you, Dr. Saida Pepper Wilson and Kefri Riley of Frontline Doulas and Diversity Uplifts, as well as some of our team in the background that you don't get to see today of the Black Wellness and Prosperity Center. And we make up the Black Doula Consortium. We are excited to be here with you as our last offering of 2022, but preparing you for what is on the horizon for 2023 for not just uh, Black women and Black birthing people, but our whole state of California with the expansion of doula services to be covered by Medi-Cal. So what we want to share with you today is a quick guide to Medi-Cal coverage of doula services and to provide you with some essential tips for the Medi-Cal doula provider manual from the Black Doula Consortium. I also neglected to say uh, my great friend and colleague, Dr. Uh, I'm going to call her Dr. But Shantae davies Balch is the head uh, founder and director of the Black Wellness and Prosperity Center, which is also uh, a huge part and lead in our Black Doula Consortium. Starting on January 1st, 2023, Medi-Cal covers full spectrum doula care as preventive services. So doula services are gonna be aimed at preventing prenatal, uh, perinatal complications and improving health outcomes for our Black women and birthing persons, as well as their infants. So we're very excited to be a part of this work and to be pushing forth the effort and educating around uh, this important effort to reduce the incidence of morbidity and mortality in the African-American community, as well as nationwide uh, to support celebratory birthing and pregnancy and to ensure that we have great health outcomes. So I wanna bring my colleague to the front and she's going to uh, go into more about these services. So Kefri Riley, come to the platform, please. Thank you so much, dear Ajwa. Um, this is such an exciting time. This is a historical benefit. And it's going to be available to all those who are on Medi-Cal who are birthing. And doulas serving these Medi-Cal beneficiaries are going to be providing person-centered, culturally competent care that supports the racial, ethnic, linguistic, and cultural diversity of beneficiaries while adhering to evidence-based practices. So you're going to get doula care, community doula care, and alignment within how we should be birthing right now, which is empowered, joyful, whole, healthy, and supported. So the doulas now are going to uh, be able to give this to you if you are a beneficiary under Medi-Cal. This is so exciting. Now, these rates are probably some of the best that are in the nation, and California is really leading the way. And we're going to be offering so many opportunities to educate you more on these rates and what these visits might look like. But these are the current proposed reimbursement rates. One extended initial prenatal visit, 90 minutes, at $126.31. Eight prenatal or postpartum visits, $60.48 per visit. Two extended postpartum support visits at $180 per visit. These will be up to three hours, billable in 15-minute increments. Then there'll be nine additional postpartum visits at $60.48 per visit if recommended by a licensed provider. The support during labor and delivery for vaginal birth will be $544.28 and for the cesarean birthing, it will be $544.72. For support during or after abortion or miscarriage, that rate will be $250.48. And in these rates, the prenatal visits, you can determine how many visits you wish to give, as well as postpartum. And those visits are also able to be given after a pregnancy release or miscarriage. For the doulas, there are minimum qualifications that you'll need to meet in order to be approved to be a Medi-Cal provider. You must first be at least 18 years old, and you're going to have to possess an adult and infant CPR certification, and we'll have more information on the website on, on those CPR certification options. You must have completed basic HIPAA training and have a national provider identifier or NPI 
And you can do that through their website. Again, this information is available on the website and on these links that we're going to provide to you. And you also have to meet one of the below qualification pathways. And there are two pathways. We have option one, which is the traditional training pathway. So you're going to complete a minimum of 16 hours total of training in the following areas, lactation support, childbirth education, foundations on anatomy of pregnancy and childbirth, non-medical comfort measures, prenatal support and labor support techniques, developing a community resource list, and provide support at a minimum of three births. There is no training organization that is assigned to be approved for this. You can train at any organization that meets the following areas within a birth doula, postpartum doula, full spectrum doula pathway. So as long as you have a birth doula training that covers these areas and you provide a support at a minimum of three births, you will be approved. Option two is the experience pathway. And this is going to be for doulas who may not have all of the records for their previous trainings and have been a doula actively for five years in either a paid or voluntary capacity within the previous seven years. There'll be an attestation to skills in prenatal labor and postpartum care as demonstrated by the three letters of recommendation. And this is important because you can have one letter that can be from a licensed provider, a community-based organization, or an enrolled doula. And the last two letters can be written client testimonial letters or professional letters of recommendation. So those can come from a physician, a licensed behavioral health provider, a nurse practitioner, a nurse midwife, a licensed midwife, an enrolled doula. So a doula who's already enrolled in this program can also write you a letter of recommendation or a community-based organization. So all these letters must be written within the last seven years. And we're going to go a little bit further over what type of recommendations are acceptable. The most important thing about this, um, the examples for the recommendation letters is that one of the letters has to come from a licensed provider. So you could have either a licensed provider provide a recommendation or an enrolled doula or a CBO and then have two client testimonials, but you can't have three client testimonials. Um, so there's various ways that you can mix that up, just not um, with just three uh, client testimonials. Okay, so given the fact that doulas will be serving unique needs of families all over California, there's a recommendation that doulas have advanced training in various topics. These are not mandatory in order to enroll as a doula, um, but these may be topics that people would have continuing education in and continue to um, enhance their skills to serve the population. So these are prenatal support, hands-on support with clients, trauma-informed care, culturally sensitive, uh, cultural sensitivity or competency training, implicit bias, anti-racism, social determinants of health uh, for birthing populations, prenatal mood and anxiety disorders, um, intimate partner violence, postpartum care and support, infant and newborn care, and prenatal loss and bereavement support. Again, these are not mandatory. They are suggested recommended trainings that doulas would have. What's important to note is that there are continuing education requirements for the doula benefit. Doulas have to complete at least three hours of continuing education, either in maternal, perinatal, or infant care every three years. You don't have to have CEUs um, formally. You could just have a training certificate, but some type of proof that you've taken courses that would enhance the experience of being a doula. And certainly those recommendation uh, courses, the recommended courses would be um, advisable, but there is no limitation on the type of courses that people can take to fulfill the continuing education requirement. Final tips. So the benefit is coming out in January in order to be approved for reimbursement as a doula, working with families that have Medi-Cal. There are two steps that have to take place. One is that the doula would need to apply through the PAVE Medi-Cal provider portal, um, and they also would need to contract with local managed care plans. So this is very important as an understanding that there are options. Individuals can be just direct Medi-Cal doulas if they chose, but they'd only be able to work with families who have straight Medi-Cal. Doulas can engage with the managed care plans and there are multiple plans in many people's areas. And so if you have a family that has uh, the Medi-Cal managed care plan and you're contracted with that plan, then you'd be able to provide services for that family. So it's very important to just stay tuned to the Medi-Cal websites and to um, the managed care you know, websites and information to see how to enroll um, in their benefit. 
most of the managed care plans are going to require doulas and or doula groups to have uh, liability insurance. So be on the lookout for opportunities to have liability insurance as well. Useful links. So there's lots of information that we share. There's lots of information that's out there. Simple ways that you can understand exactly what's happening and not be lost in the shuffle. Um, you can go to the Black Doula Consortium website. It's going to be updated with the links from the DHC Medi-Cal benefit and all of the opportunities that are available for doulas to be supported in this benefit. The website is www.blackwpc.org. On that website, you'll have the Medi-Cal Doula Provider Manual, the DHCS Doula Services Medi-Cal Benefit Information, the State Plan Amendment, and all of the learning portals that Medi-Cal will put out for doulas to apply. Thank you so much, and we're excited to see you join us. We want to thank you for taking the time to join us. We wanted to ensure that you had this very critical information. We here are your doula support team, and we are excited about what is going to take place. So again, I want to thank who I call Queen Kefri Riley, Dr. Queen, Mother Saida Prepper Wilson. I also want to thank who's not here on screen, Shantae Davies Balch of the Black Wellness and Prosperity Center, as well as her team, Kata Nimeth and um, Allison Burko, and so many more. Again, we thank you for taking the time to first be here with us, as well to not only Look at this information for yourself. Read it through again and again as much as necessary. Send us any feedback, any questions you may have. As well, share this with other doulas and other birth workers that you know, because we want to make sure as many as possible have this information. Be on the lookout for more to come in 2023 from your Black Doula Consortium. Have a great holiday season. Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa and all of that. We thank you again. Peace and blessings.